In 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft visited Pluto and took some images that revealed a terrifying truth about Pluto. These most shocking yet incredible Pluto images have dissected Pluto's heart, its humongous mountains, freezing volcanoes, and given us insights about Pluto's atmosphere, how Pluto is formed, and what life would look like on this distant icy planet. But before the New Horizons images, what pictures did we have of Pluto? Join us in this video as we dive deep into what terrifying truth is revealed by new images, what's been happening on Pluto, and what the future holds for Pluto. Let's take a brief look at Pluto. Pluto is the smallest yet most mysterious planet discovered in the Kuiper Belt, a disk in the outer solar system filled with rocky and icy celestial bodies, such as comets and asteroids. Pluto has a diameter of 1,473 miles, which is 5.5 times smaller than Earth's diameter and is two-thirds the size of Earth's moon. It's so small that Pluto, along with its moon Charon, would barely span the United States. Pluto is so distant that the sun's light, which travels around 300,000 kilometers, 186,000 miles per second, takes more than five hours to reach Pluto. A person standing on Pluto would see the sun as a tiny, bright star. Pluto was the last planet to be discovered in our solar system. However, in 2006, the International Astronomical Union, IAU, downgraded the status of Pluto to that of a dwarf planet. And the same year, NASA's team launched New Horizons into space to explore celestial bodies beyond our solar system. Before the New Horizons' fascinating discoveries, the best images of Pluto revealed only a fuzzy blob of reflected light. So, in 2015, after covering 3 billion miles in nine years of travel, New Horizons finally reached near Pluto, and it took some of the finest images of Pluto. When New Horizons visited Pluto and its moon Charon, it was difficult for it to maintain two-way communication with the Earth as it took about four and a half hours for a one-way message, so it was not in contact with the Earth. As New Horizons could only transmit data ranging from one to two kilobits per second, it took almost 15 months to receive, collect, and download all the data sent by the New Horizons. During its encounter with Pluto and its moon Charon, the total data gathered was 6.25 gigabytes. And recently, NASA published this data in the form of high-quality images. First up, let's take a New Horizons look at Pluto and its biggest moon, Charon, which is almost half the planet's size. They are both just 12,200 miles, 19,640 kilometers apart and have an unusual tidally locked relationship. This means Charon hovers over the same spot on the planet's surface. Pluto exhibits a bit of an unusual relationship, as some moons are tidally locked to their planets. The planets are not locked to the moons, but Pluto, being the odd one out, is also tidally locked to its moon, which also means that only one side of the planet is always facing the moon and the other side remains in the dark. While most parts of Charon's surface are gray, its northern pole has a reddish tint. Data from Hubble Space Telescope suggests that Pluto is getting redder. In the images of New Horizons, it's clearly seen, and it might be plausible that it visited Pluto during the reddest time. These red regions are caused by Tholen's organic compounds that rain down on the surface after the interaction of cosmic rays with atmospheric methane. Due to the weak gravity of Pluto, some of the runny compounds make their way to Charon and get localized on the red cap of Charon, the part that is always facing Pluto. Other moons of Pluto have disoriented shapes and are much smaller. The huge size of Charon often leads scientists to refer to Pluto and Charon as a double dwarf planet or binary system. The geology of Pluto is what makes it different. The most fascinating feature on its surface is the heart-shaped region called Tomba Regio, a vast plain covered with nitrogen ice. Pluto's heart is the one that controls the atmospheric circulation of the planet and blows its winds. The Journal of Geophysical Research explains it as, During the day, a thin layer of the nitrogen ice warms and turns into vapor. At night, the vapor condenses and once again forms ice. Each sequence is like a heartbeat pumping nitrogen winds around the dwarf planet. On the center left of Pluto's heart is a craterless plain named Sputnik Planitia. 
this part is fully covered with nitrogen ice. On average, 98% of Pluto's surface is nitrogen ice, which makes its temperature minus 229 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, nitrogen can flow as liquid water, and as the New Horizons close-up image has captured, we can see glaciers flowing around the edges of Tombaugh Regio. The ice plains have no craters, which means the surface region is pretty young and is still being shaped. Recently, a new study showed that as the nitrogen in Sputnik Planitia cools down, it creates irregular polygons on the surface, which result from the sublimation process. This new study is consistent with worldwide climate models, which showed that the sublimation of Sputnik Planitia started about one or two million years ago. The New Horizons have also shown mountain ranges higher than 11,000 feet 3, meters, that are assumed to be older than 100 million years. It indicates that some geological activity, such as eruption, has surely happened on its surface. John Spencer, New Horizons geology and imaging team leader, said the following. This may cause us to rethink what powers geological activity on many other icy worlds. Another high-resolution image of Pluto's North Pole shows Lowell Reggio, a series of canyons. The widest canyon is about 45 miles, 75 kilometers wide, and to the east and west of this canyon are relatively smaller ones that measure six miles wide. In the northern region, canyon walls are much degraded compared to the walls of canyons in other areas of Pluto. This inconsistency in the condition of walls provides evidence for the ancient period of geodynamics. The irregularly shaped pits reach 45 miles, 70 kilometers across, and 2.5 miles, 4 kilometers deep, scarring the region. The color and composition of Lowell Regio are unusual because such colors are not seen elsewhere on Pluto's surface. The images have also shown evidence of cryovolcanoes on Pluto's surface. This discovery implies that there might exist an internal heat source in Pluto's core that melted the inner reservoirs of methane and nitrogen ice at some point in time. As a result of geological activity, the reservoir erupted at the surface, creating a cryovolcano. However, research says that the volcanoes are probably made out of water ice because, if we look at the chemical properties of nitrogen and methane, they are too soft to support a volcano. One of the most fascinating things that New Horizons discovered was Pluto's atmosphere. Due to its weak gravity, it has a thin, tenuous atmosphere that expands when it comes closer to the sun and collapses when it moves farther away, just like a comet. The backlighting highlights around 20 layers of foggy haze in Pluto's thin but distended atmosphere. This haze consists of non-volatile compounds synthesized from atmospheric gases due to the effects of high-energy cosmic radiation. Most of its atmosphere is composed of molecular nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane. As Pluto is the farthest planet from the Sun, it is the coldest place in our solar system. The temperature on Pluto can drop from minus 375 to minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But was it the same from the time of its beginning? Formation of Pluto Pluto was formed at the time when our solar system was just beginning. Scientists believe that it came into existence from a place called the Kuiper Belt, a huge disk of rocky bodies beyond Neptune. In this vast expanse of the Kuiper Belt, Pluto started to take shape. Its formation can be traced back to the early stages of our solar system, about 4.6 billion years ago. According to current scientific understanding, here's how Pluto was formed. About 4.6 billion years ago, a giant molecular cloud collapsed under its gravity, forming a spinning disk of gas and dust called the protoplanetary disk. Within this disk, tiny dust particles began to collide and stick together, gradually forming larger objects known as planetesimals. Over time, these celestial bodies or planetesimals continued to collide and accumulate more material through a process called accretion. As they grew larger, their gravitational pull increased. Eventually, some planetesimals reached a critical size and became the building blocks of planets. This stage is known as planetesimal formation. During the early stages of the solar system's evolution, gravitational interactions between planets and leftover gas and dust in the protoplanetary disk caused some planets to migrate to new orbits. This process might have influenced Pluto's position and composition. Pluto is classified as a member of the Kuiper Belt, 
a region beyond. This process might have influenced Pluto's position and composition. Pluto is classified as a member of the Kuiper Belt, a region beyond. Percival Lowell, an American astronomer, observed some strange deviations in the orbits of Neptune and Uranus. He suggested that there must exist a planet whose gravity is pulling these massive ice planets apart and causing variations in their trajectories. After 15 years of observation, Clyde Tombaugh eventually discovered this planet in the Kuiper Belt, a beyond Neptune that contains numerous icy bodies. Being so near to Neptune, can Pluto collide with Neptune? While the possibility of a direct collision between Pluto and Neptune is exceedingly slim, the gravitational interplay between their orbits bears significant influence. Pluto's highly elliptical orbit brings it closer to the Sun than Neptune for a considerable portion of its orbital path. However, the arrangement of their orbits is such that a direct collision is highly improbable. Nevertheless, it is important to acknowledge that the gravitational interactions between Pluto and Neptune can have long-lasting repercussions on Pluto's orbit. These interactions give rise to a fascinating phenomenon known as orbital resonance. This intricate dance of gravitational forces ensures the stability of Pluto's orbit, mitigating the risk of substantial gravitational disturbances that might otherwise result in a collision. As a consequence, the chances of a catastrophic collision occurring between these distant celestial neighbors remain extraordinarily remote. The intricate dynamics of their gravitational relationship preserve the integrity of their respective orbits, allowing them to peacefully coexist in the vast reaches of our solar system. Is Pluto similar to Earth? Pluto, despite being a dwarf planet and located far away from Earth in our solar system, actually shares a few intriguing similarities with our home planet. One striking similarity is the presence of ice on both worlds. Just like Earth, Pluto has frozen water in the form of ice, although it exists predominantly as nitrogen ice on its surface. This discovery challenges the assumption that Pluto is a barren and desolate world. Another noteworthy similarity lies in the existence of a thin atmosphere surrounding both Earth and Pluto. While Earth's atmosphere is crucial for sustaining life, Pluto's atmosphere is much thinner and composed primarily of nitrogen, with traces of methane and carbon monoxide. This similarity in having an atmosphere, albeit different in composition and density, indicates that even celestial bodies with vastly different sizes can possess some common characteristics. Both Earth and Pluto experience seasonal changes, albeit on vastly different timescales. On Earth, we observe the four seasons due to our planet's axial tilt and elliptical orbit around the Sun. Similarly, Pluto's elliptical orbit and its tilted axis result in seasonal variations, albeit occurring over much longer periods of time. These seasonal changes on Pluto, driven by its elongated orbit, contribute to alterations in the distribution and appearance of surface ice. Additionally, both Earth and Pluto have geological features. On Earth, we witness a dynamic planet with diverse landforms, such as mountains, valleys, and plains, shaped by processes like tectonic activity and erosion. Pluto, on the other hand, exhibits its own intriguing geological features, including icy mountains, smooth plains, and even possible cryovolcanoes that erupt with icy substances. Although the mechanisms behind these features differ between the two worlds, the presence of geological formations suggests that both Earth and Pluto have active processes shaping their surfaces. Despite being separated by vast distances and possessing different conditions, these shared characteristics between Earth and Pluto offer valuable insights into the diversity and complexity of our solar system. Exploring and understanding these similarities can deepen our knowledge of celestial bodies and the processes that shape them, broadening our understanding of the universe we inhabit. Is there life on Pluto? The potential for life on Pluto has generated significant speculation among scientists. Although its extremely cold temperatures and limited sunlight make it uninhabitable for life as we know it, there are theories suggesting the existence of microbial life deep beneath its icy surface. The tantalizing prospect of habitable environments arises from the presence of subsurface oceans on Pluto, which could be maintained in a liquid state through internal heat sources. 
This intriguing possibility has captured the attention of scientists, particularly due to similar discoveries of subsurface oceans on other moons within our solar system, such as Europa and Enceladus. These remarkable findings have sparked a surge of curiosity regarding the potential existence of comparable conditions on Pluto. The notion that hidden mysteries lie beneath its frozen crust has further intensified interest in exploring this enigmatic world. Future space missions, equipped with cutting-edge technology, hold the potential to unveil these secrets and usher in a paradigm shift in our understanding of life's possibilities beyond Earth. By venturing to Pluto and employing advanced instruments and techniques, scientists aspire to unravel the mysteries concealed within its icy depths. The knowledge gained from such endeavors could potentially revolutionize our understanding of the potential for life beyond our home planet opening new frontiers of scientific exploration and expanding our perspective of the cosmic tapestry in which we exist. Future of Pluto As we look to the future, the study of Pluto holds great promise. NASA's New Horizons mission, which conducted a flyby of Pluto in 2015, provided us with valuable data and stunning images that have deepened our understanding of this enigmatic world. However, there is still much more to explore and discover. Future missions to Pluto could involve orbiters or landers equipped with advanced instruments to study its atmosphere, surface and potential subsurface oceans in greater detail. These missions could investigate the composition and dynamics of its atmosphere, map its terrain with higher resolution, and search for signs of organic molecules or even microbial life. Exploring Pluto's moons, particularly Charon, would also yield valuable insights. The unique tidal interactions between Pluto and Charon could have shaped their surfaces and potentially created conditions conducive to the development of complex chemistry or even the existence of subsurface liquid water. In the coming decades, advancements in space exploration technology, such as more efficient propulsion systems and improved data collection instruments, may make it feasible to send dedicated missions to Pluto. These missions could unlock the secrets of its formation, unravel its geological history, and shed light on the potential for habitability and the origins of life beyond Earth. Furthermore, with the emergence of private space exploration initiatives, there is a possibility that commercial ventures may play a role in exploring the deepest secrets about Pluto. These collaborations between governmental space agencies and private companies could accelerate our progress in unraveling the mysteries of this distant dwarf planet. The future of Pluto also raises questions regarding its planetary status. As of 2006, the International Astronomical Union, IAU, redefined the definition of a planet, resulting in Pluto being reclassified as a dwarf planet. However, scientific debate continues on the classification of celestial bodies like Pluto, and there are ongoing discussions about revisiting the definition of a planet. The reclassification of Pluto has not diminished its scientific importance or our fascination with it. Whether we call it a planet or a dwarf planet, Pluto remains a captivating subject of study due to its unique characteristics and its location in the outer reaches of our solar system. The New Horizons and James Webb Telescope's visits to Pluto have ensured one thing this celestial body is enriched with numerous cosmic treasures. Its formation from the collision in the Kuiper Belt its surprising similarities with Earth, the potential for life in its subsurface oceans, the minimal risk of collision with Neptune, and the prospects for future exploration all contribute to the enduring intrigue surrounding this distant planet. Deep studies of Pluto offer valuable insights into the formation and dynamics of our solar system, the diversity of celestial bodies, and the potential for life beyond Earth. As technology advances and our understanding deepens, Future missions hold the promise of unraveling the remaining mysteries surrounding Pluto, providing us with a greater understanding of this enigmatic world and expanding our knowledge of the vast cosmos we inhabit.